to understand the difference between average speed and average velocity, which to most people sound like exactly the same thing, we'll take another look at the example with our red and blue runners running around a circular track. I'll put a little directional uh, compass up there because that will help us out in a little bit. So once again, let's assume that the red runner completes one entire lap and the blue runner only goes about halfway, we'll say. This time we're being told that both of those runners complete those motions over the course of 10 seconds. So if I were to ask who ran faster, again, a lot of people I think would say the red runner here, which would be true in some sense. But we also run into a problem because again, the red runner actually didn't go anywhere. So how can you run faster if you don't actually end up going anywhere? So we have to think about speed limits per se as an example. So if you see a speed limit sign, you know, 35 miles per hour, well, the miles per hour is just division. It's miles divided by hours or basically some length divided by some amount of time. In the United States, we use miles and hours, but a speed is just essentially some length, some measurement of length divided by some measurement of time. So if we want to look at these two, let's first take a step back and analyze the distance and the displacement of both because that'll help us understand speed versus velocity. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to make some assumptions here. Let's assume that the full track is 400 meters and we'll assume that the blue runner ran a total path of 200 meters. They ran about half that track, just, just for argument's sake. Well, based on that, if we want to use the same idea, you know, miles per hour, meaning some kind of length divided by time, the red runner ran 400 meters of distance over 10 seconds, so they were running at 40 meters per second. The blue runner only covered 200 meters in the same amount of time, 10 seconds, therefore they were running at about half the speed or 20 meters per second. This is what most people think about when you're trying to analyze how fast something's moving. However, we can also look at the displacement. If you remember from the previous uh, video or conversations, the red runner actually ended up back where they started. They didn't displace themselves at all. So their total displacement, which again is also some measurement of length, their displacement of zero divided by the 10 seconds was zero. They, they displaced themselves at a rate of zero because they didn't end up going anywhere when they were done with their motion. However, and again, I'll assume that that straight line distance between the uh, blue runners to start and end position is 80 meters, as I've drawn on that track. Uh, if we assume that that's about 80 meters straight line, uh, they went about 80 meters southeast, using my compass up top, about 80 meters southeast over those 10 seconds. So they were actually displacing themselves at a rate of 8 meters per second southeast. So you'll notice here we have four different values for two different people. And I only asked one question. So one of the things we need to realize here is that first calculation that was based on the distance that they traveled, those are known as the average speeds of the runners. And the bottom values, the rate at which they were displacing themselves, is what is known as the average velocity, or the average velocities of those runners. So there's a slight difference, as you can see here, same scenario, four entirely different answers. So let's dive in a little bit deeper into these terms so we can understand exactly what's going on. So as we said, one of them is referred to as average speed. An average speed is the rate at which distance is covered during an object's motion. So that is the one that's concerned with the actual path that you're traveling. Direction is irrelevant. Every step you take is going to add to your distance and therefore affect your speed. In physics, the unit, it's that length divided by time, but length in physics is measured in meters, time is measured in seconds. So get used to using meters per second. Miles per hour is a very American thing. Physics is a global thing, and we refer to speeds and velocities in meters per second. Speaking of velocity, that is the rate at which a moving object experiences displacement. It's not necessarily how fast that object is moving relative to the ground. It's the rate at which that object is approaching its final destination, if that kind of makes sense. Um, it's meters per second, but you need to have direction as well because they vector quantity. It's based on displacement, which is a vector and requires direction. Therefore, velocity or average velocity is a vector and requires that direction as well. To give you the first equations that you're going to have in this course, if you'd like to calculate the average speed of an object, as we kind of already did in that first example, uh, the distance traveled divided by the time. So you can see S, uh, a little you know, sub-average, is the average speed must be measured in meters per second. 
The distance is represented with a lowercase d, must be measured in meters. Time, lowercase t, must be measured in seconds. Now we have a little bit of an issue when it comes to average velocity because the equation is not distance over time, it's displacement over time. But we can't use a lowercase d again because you've already used that for distance. So you will typically see delta x, change in x. Think of it like a number line, you know, a horizontal number line, left to right. It's the change in your position on that kind of x-axis, so to say. But delta x is the displacement. Uh, you need that measured in meters plus a direction. Time, again, is measured in seconds. Therefore, the average velocity unit must be meters per second plus a direction. Very similar terms calculated slightly differently based on slightly different concepts.